Thank you so much for doing this interview with me here at the List Gallery. Um, this is so cool because we were we were talking before the interview. And we we're going, yeah, we know each other, and then we realized we had a conversation in Brian List's office talking about your work and hopefully doing an interview. Finally, it took 12 months, but we're finally doing it. You have your work here at the List Gallery. How does it feel having your exhibit here? Well, it's wonderful, actually. Uh, Brian is wonderful, and uh, the work looks really good. It looks good in this space. And it's a pleasure to be interviewed by you. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much, especially with uh, the, the dedication that you have to two things. Photography, black and white. Somehow you make this art. Why? black and white and why does it work so well with you what do you look for in the textures to make your pictures come out and really res uh, resonate i guess there's a couple of things trying to express express generally the beauty of nature although the midway lights photographs of course are not uh, landscape and um i'm in love with geometry and geometric form which is the underlying structure of most things including nature and people and whatever and and expressing it in the flesh but the, under, the structure underneath has always fascinated me. And I'd like to think that my photographs, the images, do express the excitement of that geometry. How did you start in this? Like, what was the passion for you for this? And who were some of the people that you call your mentors in helping you reach the goals that you've uh, attained? I started at the age of six, looking at... Uh, drugstore windows uh, and, and thinking, oh, those cameras look so great. They're little black box cameras. But I was fascinated by photography from the age of six, so I'm not sure whether I found it or it found me. <laughs> and mentors would be, in particular, uh, the extraordinary experience of, of a workshop with uh, Ansel Adams and Brett Weston and Maria Cassindis and Wynne Bullock in the 70s when I was in the States at Taliesin. And uh, Robert Bordeaux in Ottawa was a, was a wonderful uh, mentor who looked me up, actually. And, and uh, I went to see his work and thought, oh, this is fantastic. What are you doing that I'm not doing? <laughs> but when did, it actually, when did it actually start clicking into you about because uh, that black and white was the way to go for you? Was there something in particular that went, wow, this is amazing, and then you continued with it? Black and white um, is... Uh, Maybe it's not quite the right word. It's more abstract. Mm -hmm. it, it tends to distill things in a way that color. And color is a wonderful world. And I'm just not a color photographer. Mm -hmm. And there are some wonderful color photographers. Uh, but that just doesn't seem to be me. I've never really been fascinated by color. Although modern digital color is really good. But I've never thought that way. It just uh, and, and that translation from, from the reality of color to the phenomenon of black and white, which is... Um, it is sort of like a distillation of, of things. And, it is a, and it, you frequently get fooled. I mean, you think that your eye can understand that translation, but it frequently doesn't. And then it's just, a, uh, it's just a, an image that doesn't work. But it still fascinates me, that translation. And I think that the black and white just has that, that graphic dis distillation of reality. Still real, but not literal. Well, what about the, the translation from film to digital? You started out with film, digital is now today. How does that work into your art, or do you, d did it make a difference? Uh, it has actually made no difference, uh, because I don't do digital. Uh, it, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I do digital mostly for uh, like photographing at the gallery, or an evening uh, photographing the guests, or something, but I don't think of it as being for me, a serious medium. Mm -hmm. Although for some people, of course, it is. And the cameras are fantastic, the new cameras. But the other issue in particular, and I probably will at some point go all digital, but in particular, the, the main issue is that you can't do a silver print very easily off of, a digital, off of digital imagery. Does it also make a difference in the lighting when you're doing black and white, depending, of course, where you are, what's going on? Does that make a difference in making those pictures resonate? Lighting and, and sort of and lighting. compared to color or compared to digital, you mean? No, actually, I mean, though, when you work for working with black and white, how does the lighting help the art work? Are you looking at certain things? Do you have things set up? Like, how does that help? Um, it's all intuition. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't matter whether it was digital or film. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I gave a, a course a number of years ago in landscape photography. And... Uh, there has been over the years people who have an idea of what good composition is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember seeing a diagram many years ago with eight rectangles. 
there was the cross, there was the circle, there was the S shape. It was all the things that make good composition. And I showed that page as, as quite young to a wonderful, very creative cousin. And I said, well, do you think this is, you know, I should be looking at... And he closed the book and he said, just go out and take photos. <laughs> so my feeling is that's all you do. You just, something grabs you. And this is what I advise the students. Mm -hmm. And where your eye is is where you put the lens. And you know about the differences between le lens, telephoto, whatever. But basically, uh, put, the, put the camera where, the, where your eye is and make the image and don't think any more about it than that. What type of pictures do you like to take? Uh, is it a landscape? Is it people? Oh no, I'm not. I'm a very bad people photographer. Mm -hmm. Make people look really uncomfortable. <laughs> they look like they're going to spit at me. So I figured I'm not going to be harsh, unfortunately. So it's landscape. <laughs> landscape, buildings, architecture. You saw the Iranian portfolio. Yes, I did. But there was something else too, and you're actually standing behind it because this is part of the exhibit. You've done something a little different this time around. What's going on with this? Well, that's the same with this one here. Mm -hmm. The um, well, this is landscape. Mm -hmm. It's just the water, the, the sun glowing off, glistening off of the water. And this is a multiple exposure uh, of the lights of the Midway, which is quite a magical time in, at night. I've been doing it since 1998, actually. But the, thing is, things. but the thing is, though, with what we're looking at right now, though, I mean, it's not in a frame. What's the setup in the background for all this? Um, I, don't, I don't follow. What, what, what do you mean? What I mean, though, is when, if I was to touch this... Yeah, is this glass? Is this? Oh, that's are, what I mean. This I'm not actually sure what this is. This is uh, an, an interesting experiment of having the aluminum background instead of white. These are white in the background. These are silver in the background, and it has a different luminosity. It has a, you can see how it glows differently mm -hmm. to a pure white background. You have to be very specific about which images you do in silver because there's a danger that it will all look very gray. Is this the first so, time you're yes, doing something? Yes, this is brand new. Wow. Never tried this before. I don't process these. This is processed by a lab. Okay. A very good lab. It's really good. And uh, so you're, what you're seeing is the aluminum in behind the image which is printed onto this. Whereas normally you would print uh, an emulsion onto a piece of white paper. How did you come up with an idea for something like this? Uh, it's, it's around. It's mm -hmm. not, uh, a couple of people I know have been doing, uh, shall we say, experimenting with it. It generally doesn't work. Most images wouldn't work with it. So when you decided to do this, you chose the, you chose the photos that you wanted to use. Yes. When you finally got this back, what were your thoughts? Delighted. <laughs> yeah, really delighted. And we went through the, uh, a couple of people helped me choose pictures because I sent out a whole bunch and they said, oh, no, you can't, this won't look good, this won't look good, mm -hmm. uh, compared to a, a white background, which is much easier to work with. So, yeah, it's interesting, and I'm looking forward to trying a bit more of them. Yep, looking forward to it. So I'm going to get you to stand right back over here because I want to ask you, too, what are some of the other photos that we're going to have a chance to see when we come to the List Gallery? Um, well, I'm just thinking, there's the Midway Lights portfolio, which mm -hmm. is that portfolio, mm -hmm. and of course there's the water, which is really a portfolio now, it's not just landscape. Mm -hmm. There are some landscape photographs, although most of the work I've been doing for the last few years is, is water, and uh, just love being out there, and, and I have been experimenting now with the moving camera, which is similar to what's happening with some of these Midway Lights photos. It's a technique that I explored with the Midway Lights, and now trying it in landscape. I don't think that, uh, there's anything uh, on the wall right now. Um, where but the, it will be when they get here. Well, they'll be in, uh, they'll be in the book. They'll be in the book. Oh, yeah, the, and that's right. And you also have a book, too. Yeah, we have a book on water. We have a book on Midway Lights. We have a book called Canada Coast to Coast, which we took to Vancouver in the summer. And, and people and are the doing look, they, they see you looking down. I'm just going to hold that up there so they can see that. Yeah, yeah. There it is. That's what we're talking about here. There we go. That's one of the books. That's one of the books. There you go, fantastic. We can get that here too. Great. Look, you know what? I think a lot of people are going to be looking forward to seeing this. And, um, you know, one of the things I always love to ask, though, is what you hope that folks will get when they see your work. What do you hope that is going to be expressed back to them? You know, that's, that, that's a very interesting question because I don't really quite know. All I know is that there was a, a very uh, interesting sort of snarky friend who likes to be critical and all the rest of it. And he said that some of the photographs brought tears to his eyes. 
So I thought, oh, this guy's really good. <laughs> this guy's really good. He's my kind of guy. <laughs> He's my kind of friend. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you know what? I think you can bring tears and joy to a lot of people who come to see this. Um, we know we can get in touch with you through the List Gallery. Do yep. you have a Twitter or anything like that or a website that folks uh, can go to, too? If not, we can just through, go through. Through Brian. Yeah, through List. Okay. Through so List. List Gallery, that's the place you check on. There is on one there. comment that I'll make about what I like to think is my approach. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes from a movie with Peter Ustinov. And it was some sort of a silly detective movie. He was exploring something. And he came up with this wonderful line in the middle of this detective movie, as I recall. And what he said was, uh, let me get it right. An optimist knows that the world is awful. A pessimist is constantly finding out. And I'd like to think that I'm an optimist and that the photographs are optimistic. Absolutely love that. That's a t-shirt. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a so pleasure. much for the interview. Looking <laughs> forward to seeing all the pictures here at the exhibit. And uh, let's keep in touch and have another yes, conversation. Please. Anytime. My love. pleasure. Anytime.